Okay, picking up where it turned off. Not sure why it turned off. It maybe it timed out or something. Um, Alright, so where we left off is that you probably saw, I think you did, uh, see the hot wire finish, the top and the bottom. Right? Alright, so I... Next step is uh, to take it out of the out of the blank. Now I already disconnected my uh, my templates here um, going on thinking that it was recording so I've skipped a few steps here. So the next step is that you've got your top piece right? Throw that aside. You've got your core and I've already trimmed this so don't think of this as being square. It's going to be round just like the tip of your template like that. I've already trimmed this on film thinking I was being recorded. Alright, so you got a bottom piece which is also scrap. And I talked about um, that you're going to have some blips in it like this uh, where I raised the wire up off of the template and that's where the, the, the sanding block is going to come into play later. The important thing is that you want the bottom to be flat and uniform. So if you have any blips that stick up on the bottom, those need to be knocked down so that when you put it down flat on the table that it's uniform every section is flat on the bottom very very important parallel 90 flat on the bottom is very very important okay so now I got to this point right here I want to reinforce the leading edge I also want to cut off the trailing edge the width of the elevator or uh, the ailerons um, in this bird, I use two inch. Okay, so we're going to go to the chop saw here. And I'm going to use the chop saw to get square cuts. And this is why it's real critical. Leading edge material. At Home Depot, find a, a quarter inch or a three, probably a three eighths dowel. In this scale, three eighths works really well as a leading edge. And you can use your your shape, your profile as your example. So if you put that dowel right there, does it kind of line up and continue the, the nose profile? Yes, it does in this case. In this case, this is a 5 16 48 inch, super cheesy, look at this. Um, it doesn't need to be much. Can it be a, a carbon fiber arrow shaft? Yes, it can. Uh, that, that all works really well. Uh, so. 5 16 this could even be about 3 8 So the next thing you want to do is square cut off the front edge and 2 inches off the trailing edge. You know, I'm, I'm talking in the wrong location. I'm screwing this up. Sorry. Now I'm in frame. God, this is new for me, okay? And I'm an old guy, so bear with. Square cut off. You're going to be attaching dowel like this to reinforce this leading edge because we get dings on the in the leading edge. It's nice to have something in there, not very heavy. This is super lightweight. Uh, it will be probably real hard to find as straight as possible. So in the bin there at your home improvement center, pull out you know a couple dozen of them, a handful of them, and then start siding down. Look down the shaft to make sure that they've got maybe long curves, but no, you know, real sharp. Uh, long curves you can straighten out and it's not going to affect your your wing at all but if they're curved hard then that may show up as a wavy leading edge you don't want that the other thing too and I mentioned off probably off camera there is I'm going to cut off two inches off here can you use this as your um, as your uh, uh, moving surface your aileron yes you can um, you may not want to cut this off. You may want to do the complete covering and everything and then cut this off as needed. That could be done as well. But the reason I'm cutting this off is that I'm going to reinforce this trailing edge with a piece of plywood. And uh, I'll show that to you. Um, in fact, I'll show that to you right now. Hold that thought so you can see why. To reinforce that trailing edge is very important because it acts like a spar on the trailing edge. So my ailerons, my ailerons are separate, they are attached separately. So what I have is the wing cord, and that right there is, um, that right there is a piece of, of uh, eighth inch 
to uh, 3 16 plywood. It could be a piece of solid stock, it could be plywood, whatever you want it to be. Um, but that reinforces the back trailing edge and that will all get captured inside of the package here. Which is, uh, in this case, this is a craft paper on top. And then the, the cello, clear cello tape here. And this could be blue, it could be whatever you want to do. In this case, I just did, I had black paper and I had clear tape. Again, what I had in hand, on hand. So that goes continuous all the way through. And then my ailerons are tape hinged on. Flush on the top. Hinging space gap on an angle on the bottom. And I did my um, flaps like this. It's not a complete profile, it's just a piece of, um, this is again foam board. This is foam board as well. I have to get into that a little bit later. I hinge tape on the bottom for this. So the tape is flush on the bottom here. And this only goes down. So that's, uh, that's my flap attachment. And yes, there's a big gap here. Does it matter? No, I don't think so. It doesn't seem to care. Um, could you make uh, a long set of these and chop it? Sure. Um, but then you're going to want to put your bevel. Um, actually, you don't even have to have a bevel on it. It can be square cut. Yeah. So you could do this profile or this design out of foam board. You can see I did a, a taper. Uh, on one of them actually no taper my bad I did anyway I'll get into this later the point is for the flap section you could leave it square because it hinges down it doesn't need a gap trailing edge so in this leading edge under all this uh, stuff here is that 316 dowel all right so back to the dowel so what I did is I Go to the handy dandy chop saw, right? And I'm going to chop off this front edge to accommodate the dowel to sit in that space, all right? So I went ahead and chopped. And if you hold the dowel there, the idea is that the profile is going to continue on around that, right? And not be too far back that now you've made a real blunt nose, or if you didn't take off enough, that it gets fatter here uh, to accommodate the dowel. It has to be as close to continuous as possible, and that's pretty close right there. All right, so the next step is I'm going to chop off the uh, the trailing edge. I'm going to put it back on the camera pod or tripod. why again it's real important or real simple to do 12 inch sections is this sliding chop saw will handle 12 inches no problem and it makes it easier to be controlled it makes it easier to be um, uh, more precise so turn on the power using the chop off the desired uh, section um, and I, I just discarded it, okay? So this is where you're going to attach... That's where you're going to attach the um, plywood, and you're going to rip that plywood to this height. Maybe even slightly less, okay? At the most a sixteenth less. So you've got a nice 90 degree right there. That plywood will hot glue right on there. Super to duper nice. Dowel's going to hot glue right on there. And then later what we'll do is I use um, spackle. Uh, what I use is a lightweight spackle. If you guys can read that or not. There it is. This is lightweight spackle. It's the white, real, real fluffy... Um, wall patching material. You get that of course at any home improvement center. It's really super lightweight. It's water based, so it washes right off. But it's going to be a filler that you're going to use 
Again, super lightweight, and it does harden up nicely later. So you'll use that in any of these low spots. You'll use that once this is hot glued on. You're going to have a gap here at the top and the bottom. Don't use hot glue because it will distort the uh, foam and it's heavy. So once this is just, you know, run a slight bead of hot glue right there on the leading edge. Once this is all put together, lay that piece right in there, nice and straight on a flat table. And then you're going to putty fill this in, top and bottom. Make sense? Putty fill that in, top and bottom. You're going to probably end up with two or three coats. Use a much finer uh, sanding block belt, like a 120 or even a 220 um, sanding block, to take that down. You don't want to change the shape so much here. You just want to take that excess off. Right? Uh, so you've done that. You've attached the, uh, the trailing edge rip of uh, plywood. Here's a piece of solid poplar that I have got ripped. It's a little bit too tall, but the point is it's going to end up like this. Nearly flush to the top. Actually, you want to be flush to the bottom and just nearly flush to the top. And the reason is because this, again, is not 100%, but this is 100% true, this width, because you ran it through the table saw, right? So now you can sand this down till you get to the top of the wood. All right, with a with a long sweeping action on the whole wing, you're going to get that real nice and uniform. So then there's your package of you'll have a leading edge and a trailing edge, rather leading edge trailing edge uh, attached to your your blank. All right, that that comes later. I kind of jumped ahead. So um, the next step is you want to have a, a spar in the center here uh, or at the one-third back is a good place for it. There's a, there's a few things you can do here. Um, if you do the carbon shaft, pretend this is carbon shaft here, is that you're going to make a cut in, and I like to do it in each section. And so again the wing is not assembled and you have your 12 inch section like so. You're going to be cutting a slot however deep you want it. You can go all the way up in here and you can insert an aluminum tube like for the center section if you want to make them two halves um, you can do that, you can insert a tube in here but you're gonna to have to cut a slot in the bottom and the easiest way again for me is you run it through the table saw and uh, let's look at that over there so we're going over to the table saw and uh, these are some, some tubes and whatnot I was going to talk about. Got a table saw, table saw blade. All right. This determines the depth that you can cut up into your foam. All right, the height. So if you want to, if you want to make your um, slot. For that, you can recess it in there and maybe put a foam plug underneath it, um, or you can just do it so that it's exposed on the bottom. Uh, so then the next step is to locate where where you want that um, that cut. The one third rule is very very nice. So the overall of this this wing cord is 14, say, and divide that by three and you end up with a number and that's from the leading edge to the one-third back so that location right there is where I want to put my uh, main spar the main spar not a supporting spar you're gonna put in a supporting spar back here in this third here shortly now remember you have a trailing edge spar and you have a leading edge spar which is both both lightweight but this main one needs to carry the load and then a supporting spar doesn't necessarily go, need to go the full length but just support uh, say one-third of the whole wing through the center area so 72 inches you'd have a two-foot spar in the center section and then a full-length spar here in the one-third front section 
And that's my uh, that's my building technique on that. So here's the uniformness again. If you got a table saw, you're going to cut each one of those wing sections a single cut, and you can set up a jig like a spacer that you put here. And you don't even have to move the fence. You can get two cuts on the same section at the same time. Let's say you use uh, let's say you use something like this. You just put that there. There's your new there's your new fence location uh, based upon where you want another spar. That obviously that's not big enough. Anyway, you get the idea is that you just gap it off. Now you can run that section through twice. You get two cuts without moving the fence. Okay. So then you want to do the other side of the cut. So now you need to move the fence, or you use a spacer against the fence. Now that just that just shifted the cut over uh, some amount, and that some amount you need to figure out based upon how wide that dowel is. Make sense? Get the idea? So each one of these sections is done individually. Okay? So now imagine that you have. Let's go back over here. Okay. So now imagine that you have a main spar, which could be done with um, plywood. Depot, they sell in these handy panels in the um, and they're in the bins in the lumber section and it's an import plywood it's real lightweight but it's got a, a lumber core to it the center of it is actually a solid solid material with a fairly thick veneer on both sides um, as long as you don't get it moist if you're in a high humidity area those are going to be all warped but if you make your rips and cuts and get them into your wing, not using um, not using water-based glue like an El uh, like an Elmer's or a tight bond. Um, tight bond works really well to bond to uh, foam as well. So you could use this, but I would caution it with um, I would caution it with working in foam and wood because the foam doesn't absorb the glue, but the wood does and the wood will get wet. What happens when you wet wood? It can warp. So you don't want it to warp. Uh, plywoods are less resistant to warping, so if you're using a solid wood spar, I would recommend using... Um, here's another one. Loctite PL Premium Polyurethane Construction Adhesive. This stuff is the bomb. Um, I would use this and use it sparingly. Uh, remember that your spar just it needs to be fixed in the slot so that it doesn't move around much, but it doesn't have to be filled up with this. You know what I mean? It just has to be able to stay in place and not flex inside the wing. It has to make full contact the full length, adhesed the full length. Okay, so that's, that's another good uh, material to use. So you can cut a wood spar and you're going to make it go into the wing however high you want. You can go all the way up this edge and I've even done this is where I just completely cut all the way through my wing section and then I sandwich in between and glue the two pieces together again. So now I have a continuous, continuous spar that runs from the top of the wing to the bottom of the wing, bottom surface to top. And it's a precise cut, and it works really well. So then you can re-glue those back together, or you can hold it down short. Um, so for typical wing loading like this, I would say a one-inch, uh, one-inch spar would be would be perfect for this kind of a wing. Um, the wing loading involved, 
and you can do one, you can do two, you can do three. I mean, you can do as many spars as you want to do. Um, but the main thing is that you're going to want one continuous that runs all the way out. All the other spars that you might insert in there only need to do about two-thirds of the wing center section. So again, a six-foot wing, uh, that would be a four-foot, I said earlier, two-foot as a supporting spar back here, um, four-foot long sections or pieces would be good or adequate. Um, the one-third tips, the two-foot tips out there, they don't need that. They have the main that runs all the way through, so it's a little too much. Or, or you could do it. doesn't really matter. However you want to do it. Okay, so now just imagine that you have all these slots in here, and you've already ripped up your material, your spars. Now what you want to do is go to the table. I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this piece in half here. So this is to kind of uh, give you an idea of what you got. So you have these two sections that you're going to join together, and you have your continuous strip spars, and you already have your slots already in this. So all you're going to do, literally, is take your main, each one of your sections, lay your main out, and stick it right on top of that that uh, that spar. That glue is going to squeeze out on the bottom, and what you'll do with your next one, you found of course your center point and you also have a center line panel or you have a panel as a center line. Like if you're doing a 60 inch wing you're going to have five pieces so you're going to have a 12 inch piece in the middle. See so what you want to do is you're going to want to mark 12 inches on your spar and then you want to drop that first one right on there like so. That way you know your spar is centered, right? Okay, so now you've Drop that in there after you put your glue inside. Drop the next one with some glue in it. There you go. And you're using this just on the main spar. Coat. And I, I do this. I tend to coat both sides with a thin amount versus a big amount and then stick them together. Do a thin amount on both sides. That way they're both wet. So you put two wet glue surfaces together and you stick them together. It, it does a lot better because when you stick this together with just one side, this side has to become wet by with whatever you're doing here. Okay, does that make sense? Pre-wet both sides, you get better adhesion. That one's on, it's in place. Put the next one on, it's in place, and carry on for the for the number of sections that you have. Continue that. Again, a real flat table is super de duper important here. <laughs> okay, so now you've got your main spar installed and again we got rough length here too right we don't have any trimming going on on the end so let that spar run out the end of the wing um, and in fact you can make let's say you want to make two wings two four footers so your spars are eight foot long just make a continuous uh, continuous wing on here just keep adding them on uh, the table is a limitation if you have an eight foot long table and it's super super flat and you're okay with that then you, you can make that and you could make several wings out of this so you want to make uh, say a four foot wing is what you're after and you get two there or if you do um, if you do a three foot wing or something in between you know you could get at least two right so anyway you get the idea is that you can make up wing panels uh, in bulk if you will and then just chop them to length Make sense? So, um, so now that you've you've got that main in there and it's dried, you've wiped off the excess glue in the drying process, right? It's been weighted down with some weights. Uh, small sandbags is is great. Like if you do sandwich bags, uh, like heavy duty sandwich bags. And, um, or you can do the one gallon bags and throw uh, play sand in there and you use those because they'll conform to the surface which is really nice um, and use that to weight it all down on your tabletop that you're using you might lay like two or three layers of uh, painters blue tape down where the glue line is going to be so that it doesn't stick to the wood tabletop that you have or whatever you're using for tabletop so a glue or excuse me a blue tape line through the spar section 
onto the table, start your gluing process, weight it down, let it dry. Now you have your first bar. All right. So the next step is to install all your supporting spars. With the plane or the wing flipped over, run your bead of glue in the slot. The, uh, the slot runs continuous all the way through the wings unless you didn't cut specific panels to have. Say, you, say you're doing a, uh, a 60 inch wing and you want um, two thirds of that, um, what is that, 20 inch, 40, so that's 40 inches of, of two thirds of the middle, right? So 40 inch spar is going to go in there. Now it may be a little difficult if your wing panels are 12 inch each because you can't get that um, exactly right. But the point is you don't have to necessarily run uh, every panel through the table saw to make your slots. Okay, Unless you don't care and I don't care because I just ran my spars all the way through. All full length in this case in this wing here and it is very rigid. Uh, I did some camera views out on the wing. Let me move the wing. Get it out of the sun. So I ran my spars continuous. Let me make sure the camera is still rolling. Yes, it is. All right. So run the run the spars continuous because you're going to end up end capping the wing tip anyway. You won't see them. It's all going to be enclosed. You, you got a slot there. You don't have to go that. You can fill the slot up, slot up with uh, foam or spray foam. You can do that too if you don't want to leave those slots if you don't do it continuous. Um, there's any number of ways to do it, but I run it continuous. More is better. The spar is lightweight. Um, the, the sheer size of that wing is the weight. I mean, it's, it's huge. Okay, so now you've laid in um, both of those. Press them all into the slots, press them down firmly, then flip the whole thing over and you've completely uh, covered the area where your glue is going to be. Um, there are several ways to do that as well. You can use the tape again. Uh, you could use um, like the cellophane wrap from uh, like food wrap. Uh, cellophane on a roll comes about 12 or 14 inches wide. You could use aluminum foil. Take a piece of aluminum foil and stretch it out, tape it down on both ends, and the glue won't stick to the aluminum foil. That's probably an easy one there. Um, so now that you've got your supporting spars in, okay, so now you got this blank, and 